Good day, and thanks for viewing our Tech V Talk today. My name is Murray Reynolds. I'm the Director of Technical Services here at Ferris. Today we'll be discussing CO2 huff and puff with a focus on light tight oil and condensate rich shale gas reservoirs. Variations of this, which we will not talk about today, include huff and puff in heavy oil or chop swells or CO2 remediation treatments, but we'd be happy to supply you with information on those processes if, if of interest. The challenges we're addressing today are low primary recoveries from light tight oil and condensate rich shale reservoirs, which on average recover less than 10% of the oil or gas in place. Any type of enhanced oil recovery scheme, whether it be water flood, gas flood, etc., these are capital intensive, sometimes requiring millions of dollars in field investments. Also, we ha are facing increasing carbon taxes on our emissions, and this huff and puff process is a means to reduce that tax burden or actually receive credits from the carbon tax. By huff and puff, what we really mean is cyclic solvent injection using CO2, sometimes known as CSI, also sometimes known as cold solvent injection using CO2. This particular picture depicts the three stages or phases of the huff and puff process. So on the left side, phase one, we inject the CO2 over some, some time period and some predetermined volume of CO2. There's a soak phase while the uh, CO2 diffuses and soaks into the, the hydrocarbon, the oil. And then stage three is the production phase where we produce incremental production of oil or condensate for some time period. What are good candidate wells for the huff and puff process? Wells with good initial production rates, wells with high residual hydrocarbon saturations, and these could be in light oil or condensate rich gas fields. Could be severely faulted or isolated reservoirs, by lenticular we mean isolated, could be wells with suspected water blocks or fracturing damage, could be from numerous different rock uh, types of reservoirs. Because this is a soak process versus a flood process, uh, isolation of reservoirs is, is not a problem because we're not flooding from well to well. And in the case where we might have closely spaced multi-stage fractured wells, communication might be an issue in a flood process, whereas in a soak process it's actually an advantage. What are the technical benefits? There's really four main uh, reasons why we see incremental oil production. The CO2 mobilizes the residual oil through oil swelling, viscosity reduction, increased relative permeability to oil, plus it creates a secondary gas drive during the depressurization process. This slide shows some uh, visuals of how CO2 swells oil during uh, uh, the, the injection and soak phase. On the left hand side of the picture we see just normal crude oil in a visual cell at zero pressure. The middle visual shows what happens to the oil when we inject CO2 at 2000 psi and we see an immediate swelling of the oil by approximately 23 percent. The picture on the right shows what happens after five hours of soak time, we see further swelling of the oil by a total of 32%. Okay, how much improvement could we see from a, a multi-cycle huff and puff process? It's in, it could be anywhere from 50 to 150% improvement compared to primary recovery. This slide shows some reservoir modeling work in a light tight oil reservoir, the West Peminocardium field. We use the CMG reservoir model to match the initial primary production of, of the well and we see roughly four years of production shown on the screen with a total recovery of 80,000 barrels of oil or about 4.25% recovery fractor of the drainage area. This slide depicts some, some variations uh, that were run from the reservoir model. Uh, Left-hand side we see 
different injection rates daily. Uh, second from the left, we see the total days of injection time, anywhere from 30 to 90 days. Different total volumes, and in, in this case we, we had anywhere from 500 cubic meters up to 8,000 cubic meters of injection. And uh, second from the right, we see the total incremental production from one cycle of injection followed by the soap phase, followed by six to nine months of in incremental production. I put a box around one of the simulation cases here where we injected a total of 2,700 cubic meters of CO2 and we see 12,000 barrels of incremental oil recovery or about 15% increase over and above the primary recovery factor from a single huff and puff phase or cycle. Operational advantages, this is a proven technology, it's been used for many years in the U.S. In, in light and conventional oil applications. It requires minimal capital cost and Ferris has several different equipment options that are all mobile and uh, easy to move from location to location. We generally see high utilization factors of roughly five to eight barrels of oil per ton of CO2 injected. And we see 30 to 50 percent of the CO2 is permanently sequestered. Hence, we can apply for uh, uh, CO2 credits. Okay, so in conclusion, this is proven technology with over 50 years of success in conventional oil reservoirs. Ferris is proposing a new twist on this old technology using multi stage horizontal wells in tight and shale reservoirs. We see major applicability in the Montney and Duvernay oily and condensate rich areas, the deep basin rich gas reservoirs, the Bakken, Cardium and Viking tight oil reservoirs. And we would be happy to assist you with in evaluating the feasibility of using CO2 huff and puff in your reservoir. Uh, we have some extensive research uh, from, from different papers, including uh, several here from the 2017 Unconventional Resources Conference. Once again, thanks for watching our Tech V blog. And if you have any questions at all, please contact me at the numbers listed or by email. We'd be happy to provide you with more information. Thank you.